Kentucky State up. Fair. That despite some complaints from the local Humane Society and others. As we told you at 6 o'clock tonight, Bud, the king of the wrestling bears, is a 650-pound train bear that wrestles volunteers from the audience. Al Pefley has this updated report. Bud was back in the ring again early tonight, taking on four more volunteers brave enough to wrestle him. But there was a new face in the audience. This man heads the County Department of Animal Control and Protection. He says his staff will check on the Bear Act at least once a day. From the aspect of whether or not there's any laws being violated, I still don't believe so, although potentially there is that uh, possibility. A State Humane Society official says they've had over two dozen calls complaining the Rasslin Bear Act is cruel. I say at this point it's comparable to people roughhousing with a dog. The head of the local Humane Society says she thinks the bear has been drugged. I can't believe somebody would say that because I, I have never, and I've been in business 35 years, I have never, ever used a drug on an animal. Allen says the bear has not been mistreated, and he has the necessary state and USDA permits. A state fair official says she's had a half dozen calls objecting to the Bear Act. But despite requests, she says fair officials do not plan to stop the bear wrestling event. Uh, we've carefully, you know, checked the bear out. Uh, he is not mistreated. As a result of the bear dispute, she says fair officials will consult with the county animal control staff before booking animal acts next year. Oregon says they probably will not bring back the Rassel and Bear Act again next year to the State Fair, not because of the protests they've had, but because they want to present a variety of entertainment. At the State Fair, Al Pepley, Wave TV News. Well, the bear may not be back, but hundreds of people who plan and set up the State Fair will. And when you zero right in on the midway, you'll see people who work the circuit year-round, and for them, the fairs are a way of life. This is a, a situation that consumes all your time, and uh, I, I like that. Well, that's Ted Turner, and he's been on the road with the Cumberland Valley Show about 16 years. He used to be a stockbroker. He says the job's hard, the hours are long, the work's often dirty, but the payoff in the end is worth it. Is it a good life? I think so. It, it's, it's, it's rewarding sometimes to see people have a good time. Well, this is only day two of the fair. It has a whole nother week to go, and of course, the Indiana State Fair is also in full swing this week up in Indianapolis. Today, a surprise was added to the list of scheduled events. South Carolina farmers sent crates of peaches. A couple of weeks ago, you'll remember that Hoosier farmers sent some badly needed hay to their counterparts in dry South Carolina. Well, the peaches showed up to serve as kind of a thank you. Craig Edwards is up next. He'll have the weekend forecast. And then later, Scott Patrick rolls in with tonight's What's Hot? This one is called a boneless. Some parents might call it a mindless. Oh, it's a boneless because if you slam too bad, it's going to be boneless. <laughs> Jimmy Schlepp Bell is known as the chairman of the board. So why do you do it, Jimmy? I'd impress with the girl. Go out and skate and show off. Having fun, getting hurt. Girl. Scabs, girl. In that order? No. <laughs> That is part of the price you pay. These guys are proud to show off their battle wounds. The other price, around 150 bucks to get you properly equipped on a skateboard. You really can't be a cheapskate to get the total look. High tops are a requirement, so are jams or other long shorts. And if you really want to go way out, you've got to do something with the hair. Why the hair? To be different so everybody will yell at us. Enough said. Scott Patrick, Wave TV News.